Hello, my name's Jason and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Yep, we're painting again and we're going to have a go at doing our robin. Uh, I've got it set up, so I've got my robin print out here and then my canvas to do the painting on here side by side so uh, I can keep looking at each picture and try and make this one look like this one. <laughs> which is always the challenge doing a painting trying to make it look like what it actually is um just mix some color now mixing i want to mix this orange color and that's straight away i'm using my cadmium red and cadmium yellow got all my uh artisan oils there <laughs> just all placed randomly and uh what I tend to do is when I pick a picture out, I, I look at the colours, think about what I'm going to need, and then I tend to throw away the colours I don't need. Um, like on here, I can see yellow ochre there. I've got a grey here, a bit of a brown, so like a burnt umber, a bit of white, maybe a bit of black in it. Um, Grey, but obviously an orange here. Not as orange as this one, though. <laughs> and uh, that's how I start and just get going. Whoa, 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 let's do brown. Yeah, I need to dull my orange, so I just went into uh, what I thought was a little bit of the uh, burnt umber, which turned out to be a lot. And. Uh, here we go. I've got a different mic today. I thought I'd try a lavalier mic for a change to see if it improves my audio. As I put a uh, <laughs> on my Facebook, I asked for questions to do a Q&A session. And one of the things was, um, can you improve your sound so I can hear you speak while doing the painting? And I'll give it my best with this mic, see how it works. Um, I've got another one ordered. This is just one that I've had lying around that I used to use. And we'll see how it goes. And looking at this, mine is so bright. Oh, I think I've just ruined the color. <laughs> I just put in a little too much brown. <laughs> Amazingly, that is closest that I've had so far a lot of brown in with my orangey color it's amazing uh, when you're mixing colors and you get the color that's about right like this is about right and um, you think whoa that's a lot duller than I expected it to be and you find that <laughs> so I'm really when I start, I just want to get a mass of colour in. Get get my brush and just throw the colour on. Because we can change things on the canvas as we're doing it. Like I, I can now get in a bit of more red in here and there. I can put some of that in. Just as I'm painting. So another question I had on my uh, Q&A was, uh, will I be doing ASMR videos? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> and I didn't intend to do ASMR videos, um, but if they work for you, then that's fine. That was, my main focus is on painting, um, but if they help you, these videos help you relax, then that's great too, isn't it? I don't mind that. But no, I, I won't be <laughs> getting a 3D mic and making ASMR videos. Sorry. There's people out there doing that. that are much better than what I could do. And if you've never heard of ASMR, which I didn't originally until I looked it up a while ago when someone said that my videos give them ASMR. I was getting a bit worried. <laughs> I was like, what is this? 
and then uh, I watched this video where someone was uh, pretending to give me a haircut and I did need a haircut at that point as well um, and I watched it unfortunately it was all role play so I didn't get a free haircut which is what I was after <laughs> okay so I'm just getting little bits of brown and uh, just trying to make this bird look a little fluffier than what I, it does look like at the moment the little robin and just having a look at the picture and then coming back and thinking hmm it'd be nice to have a little bit more of that in there or a bit more of this and, and you just sort of just go for it because when you're using a reference image just picking up a bit of yellow go into this red over here yeah when you're using a reference image you don't want to um, prevent yourself from being creative at the same time because unless you're doing a commission and then <laughs> you've got you haven't, don't have as much um, artist power when you're doing a commission because you need to make your painting if someone's send you a picture of a dog and that's the commission you're going to do then you've got to paint that dog <laughs> it's got to look like that dog uh, that's it that's, <laughs> that's the whole game at that one but if you're doing something fun uh, like I'm doing now then you can play with color a little bit play with um, shape and form and things so uh, and you don't have to worry too much about getting it exact so I'm just putting a little bit of yellow ochre down and uh, black Yes, I use black, ivory black. Get a bit of white as well. I need some titanium white. <laughs> I'm actually wearing headphones while I'm doing this, so uh, apologies for the uh, funny voices because I can hear myself. So I tend to. When I can hear myself, I tend to entertain myself by doing funny voices. Okay, let's see. Bright. So, um, thinking back to questions that I've had, uh, there was one question, I think it was on YouTube, I noticed, and someone says, oh, I'm really struggling with mixing colours, and... Uh, you can't just put black in to make it dark or you can't put white just white in you need other colors and yeah it's true and the only way to get better is practice just play around and do things you'll you'll find uh, lots of different ways people do it and uh, you've just got to mess around and find a way for yourself. I'm always um, just thinking about the colours that I have and then the colour that's on there and what can I do to get that colour using the colours that I have. And that's it, that's all I really do now. <laughs> uh, I hope these videos are helpful anyway. thinking this, I can sort of see hints of this here. I'm just going to put some in anyway. So we're going to go into the grey next. I need to think about the shape of this as well. The shape of it as a whole. I think I'll do for that colour. We might revisit it later for certain areas if we want to change things, but I'm going to leave that now. 
Let's get another brush. Let's get this brush that's been worn away. <laughs> Someone asked about brushes that I use. I use um, a bit of a mixture, but the majority of them are the Winsor & Newton foundation brushes, and uh, which aren't for makeup, they are for painting. <laughs> And also, I've actually got a few Cotman, Winsor Newton watercolour brushes, the Cotman range in there, thrown in that I use for detail. And also, these brushes, um, Italeri brushes, which um, I got from eBay, which is a model making um, shop on eBay. And I just wanted some small brushes to do detail, small details. And this worn out brush, <laughs> it feels awful. Um, I don't want to use it. I think this brush needs to go in the bin. It's a sad moment throwing a brush away, but it does happen. I've hung on to some brushes for uh, a long time. And keep it used, keep trying to use them. Eventually, they give up the ghost. Ooh. The the thing about these um, foundation brushes, actually, the more you use them, the softer and nicer they get. Because they start off with these bristles, like like that, quite tough, and then end up really soft like that, which we like. I like the soft brushes. Okay, let's make this grey up here. See how bright that is. <laughs> Gets me every time when I mix in my colour and then uh, I put it up against the printout and I'm like, look how bright that is. So bright. Ooh, looks pretty good. Pretty close got a tiny brownness to it. Let's, let's get some of that. I quite like that. I'm just gonna like do some strokes. So the canvas, um, I'm actually using a canvas today and not a canvas board. I do favour the canvas boards at the moment because they're uh, small for storage if you want to keep some pictures and you want to store them away it's quite good to use a just looking at that area there that goes down it's where it is in relationship to the eye Bit more dark. I oh, want this to uh, come together in here, so it's just a matter of going over it, and it sort of brings it together. You can use the softening brush if you need to soften it as well. Okay, I want a bit more dark in this now. So another question I had, apologies, I can't remember the names of the people. <laughs> I should have wrote them down. Um, maybe I'll do a, uh, a live episode once where people can ask questions live. I don't know, maybe. I always think about doing that. But I've never done it before, so I'm not sure. Anyway, what was I gonna say? Oh, another question I had, they said, um, have I quit doing uh, wet on wet painting? Am I, uh, have I gone from painting like the great Bob Ross to painting uh, the Jason way? <laughs> and uh, the answer to that is, I haven't changed really. Um, um, 
not sure how to explain it, <laughs> but basically the uh, the wet on wet technique is not much different to any technique in painting. I don't find I, I can I've tried painting in different ways, and the only way um, the only reason why I can do it is because of my time uh, learning um, when I was a when I learned to be a Bob Ross instructor was how I got better at painting, <laughs> you know, it's, and that route uh, that I got from watching the shows and doing the uh, many, many paintings um, made me a better artist. So I don't feel like I've changed, it's just what I want to do now, I want to um, do more details, do more, get a bit more of um, well yeah, detail, <laughs> do more details, and um, I wanted to try my hand the little brushes. <laughs> Not just the liner. I wanted more. Always want more. The artist that always wants more. You've got to be like that. I mean, if you watch the shows, uh, the joy of painting, you'll hear Bob Ross say many times, "This is the the start. This gets people started, and then they go on to paint other things, learn other styles, and." And that's what it's all about. It's a it's a great way to do paintings, and then uh, you, you get a bit of success and start enjoying it. And you think to yourself, "Well, if I can paint that, what else can I paint? Maybe I can do a portrait, or maybe I can start painting little robins. <laughs> oh, maybe you want to draw." caricatures or you know there's no um, there's no limits no limits I was thinking about that but I see you <laughs> right I want this colour I want to get this in there so let's throw it in with this grey this Brown. It's quite close. I bet that's quite close. It is. Here we go. So we've got some uh, burnt umber, titanium white, and ivory black. Ivory black. And it's darker there, you see, but it's light there. I'm just going to throw some of this in. I know it's too light, but... Yeah, we'll leave that like that. And we'll get some more of the darks together. Bit of black, bit of brown. Mix it on the brush. Mix it on the brush. Still too light. A little light, a little brown. Oh, we got some red in there. That I didn't want to happen. Okay, remove the red paint from the brush. Back to painting. Back to mixing, I should say. A bit of brown, a bit of black. And here we go. Yeah. And uh, I did a little bit of a drawing first using a white pencil on my grey canvas, which I gessoed, and then I left the gesso to dry. There's a uh, another question I get a lot. 
when you put the gesso on, do you let it dry? Yes. Yes, you do. You don't want wet gesso. Because that's your boundary, that's uh, what protects your canvas from your paint. <laughs> and gives your paint something to adhere to. That's about as technical as I can get. <laughs> See, I'm just sort of uh, looking at the basic shape of this little robin. And if this robin's a male or a female, I don't know. Let's put this feather in. The wing, isn't it? Yeah. Bit of wing. Just sort of sitting back, having a quick look, make sure we're not messing this up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just sort of uh, what I keep doing is having a look at the picture, sitting back, and then I can just block the colours in, block the colours in. And then see what we've got. See what we've got. See if we're achieving something that looks like a robin. And once you've learned how to do this one robin, you can paint lots of robins. And then before you know it, you've got a uh, stall ready for Christmas. <laughs> you could be selling paintings of robins. And uh, mm, that's not right. That's too light, isn't it? It's got sort of a blueness to it, actually, that tail. But Let's put that dark back in. Actually, that could help to get that line there. Yeah, I'll we'll leave that. Come back to that with a smaller brush. Okay, we need to get the eye in. The eye is very important because if you get the eye right, it makes your painting look really good. <laughs> The eyes in a painting of uh, in a landscape or <laughs> in a landscape in a portrait of a man or a woman or a animal is very important because that's what the first one we look at. Look at the eyes. So time spending on the eye to get the eye right is good time. Time well spent. So I'm using my little brush and I'm trying to get the shape of the eye. Try and get that shape. Keep looking, keep looking at the picture. looking to see what shape it is. And then sit back and then say, hmm, that's not quite right. <laughs> Have another sit back. Have another look. Very close, but it's still not quite there. So what we'll do is I'm going to get a bit of this light colour. A bit of a dark in with it because I want it too light. I'm using this other brush. What I want to do is get this bit.
turn to help me then getting this bit right then. So I'm having a look, I'm gonna look at this bit here. Sort of manipulating the paint in a, in a way, I suppose. Pushing it. I mean, that's close. Uh, we could do with. Let's grab a bit of this orangey colour. And with our brown. Because I'd like to get there's like an indication of the eye in there. So like that and then white brush. Go back in onto my dark area. back into this bit darken yeah it's not bad not bad I'd like that white dot we need to get the white dot on there for the eye so it's got some white on the end of this brush see if we can put it on so it's at the top there. And you can actually see another little bit of light there. We'll leave it at that for now. It's just going to be a bit of light. I want to um, have a bit of fun with the red. I know you don't see the robin to have such red areas. Saying that, I saw a robin now when I was walking the dog the other day. And it did. It, <laughs> it was, well, to my eyes anyway, it looked so bright. I, was, I just sort of looked and I was like, whoa, that is one bright robin. I like looking at the wildlife <laughs> and walking a dog. It's interesting. Get a bit of that dark stuff. A bit of the dark stuff. Too much going on here. Okay. Sit back, have a look. It's not bad. Uh, I think we'll leave it. The fear of break breaking it. <laughs> the fear of messing it up. So that's another question I had. Uh, what? Um, what do I get nervous about when I release a picture, release a video, sorry, what do I get nervous about? Um, that I bodged something up in the editing, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think, oh no, because there's some, sometimes if I drop my brush or I uh, turn around and knock one of the cameras over or something, like that and then I forget to edit it out because when I'm editing it I get um, well like other people I suppose it's relaxing <laughs> I 
and sometimes I'm sort of uh, zoned out a bit when I'm editing and, and it's easy to miss something. It's, yeah, it's strange getting uh, relaxed by watching myself paint. Hmm, it's a little bit odd. Could do with uh, I'm thinking a bit of greyish colour here. Let's have a look. It's probably a little bit brighter than reality, but whoops. Just nearly knocked my mic off. Apologies. Just sort of uh, having a go at bringing it together a little bit here. I think what I need to do, <coughs> I need to get that beak in. That's what I need to do. I need to paint the beak. So let us get some black. Um, we could do a clearing a little area for us. So, one baby wipe. One cleared area. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> another question I had is why do I use artisan oils? Why, why have you changed to these paints? What do you like about them? Well, they work like other oil paints. It's just, um, they don't need any, anything to any, <laughs> oh, I will be able to say this any minute now. I'll be able to tell you the reason, and when I finally am able to tell you, you'll realize why. <laughs> uh, the reason I use them is because I can use water to wash my brushes with, and I can use water to thin the paint down. Um, if I'm doing lots of layers, so I'm doing a complex painting and I need areas to dry before I paint on them again, then I use artisan linseed oil, a couple of drops in the paint and then I'm away again and um, that's the reason, the, the fact that I don't have to use any chemicals, anything that's hazardous to your health because um, well it's no good is it? <laughs> Unless you have a well ventilated area I I do recommend these if you know some people like acrylics that's fine some people uh, like to use oils and they have a nice ventilated studio that's up to them isn't it I would uh, ooh, what am I doing here I have to concentrate. In this beak. Using my finger to smudge, but I ended up smudging the other paint as well, which is not good. So I didn't want to smudge that paint. In fact, I'm going to whip this off. There we go. I need some paper. Did have some paper. Yeah, well. Be all right. And we need this beak sort of 
starts there, doesn't it? Let's have a look at that. Does that look right? It's almost, it's almost. To get some of this orangey colour. Getting the shape quite right, am I? What I might do is have a look at my ruler and do a bit of measuring on the eye, make sure I've got the eye right. And then we can have a look at that. So it's a bit higher. Yeah, it's in about the right place. Sort of looking, 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 <laughs> looking at what's not right, what I can improve upon. Like this. Right. Sort of sitting back, having a look. So it goes like that. Use an angle, that's the trick, use an angle. Okay, what I'll do is I'll use my white to improve it when I do the outer bit. Because I can see it's just not, not seem to be able to get that <laughs> angle I remember when I was doing a portrait once I just couldn't get the eye right I couldn't get the eye to uh, look at me and uh, I left it and then I came back um, a bit later it was um, Actually, it was a day later, and I sat down and I just did it, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> why couldn't I have done that yesterday?" Because I kept trying and trying, and I couldn't do it. And then the next day, I sat down and just did it straight away. <laughs> mm. Reminds me of playing computer games I used, when I used to play a lot. I don't tend to play that much now, but I used, when I used to play on um, games a lot, and I just couldn't do a level. And then the next day I'd just 
come back, sit down, and just do it there and then. I was like, oh, has my brain had time to process what I need to do? <laughs> anyway, we need to uh, move on. Don't want to get too bogged down. I'm still massing in the basic shape. The leg, sort of there. And although this picture has got the uh, the little robin sat on some barbed wire, <laughs> how lovely! Um, I'm gonna have the robin sat on a twig. I'll change that. So I need is a. Uh, I'm just dark using dark color to do this at the moment. But I will uh, put some color on it in a bit. I just wanted to get the uh, the shape in really. The shape of that. Might get a little bit of blue and see. No, this is okay actually. I can do with a uh, block in this area in as well. What I mean when I say blocking in, I just want like a base colour. Just so I've got something to use, um, then I can put light and dark on. It's like you put in uh, a mid-tone and then uh, see we have a twig here. <laughs> Yeah, you put in a mid-tone and then uh, you can put light and dark on top of that, like this. This is my mid-tone here and then I can put light and dark on it in a bit. So where was I? Oh yes. I was putting in the feathers. Details. Got that feather here. Got some of this black, really dark colour, because I can see some dark areas. to get them in. Some dark bits here. light colour. Hopefully it's not too light. Not too uh, get these sort of effect of a few tail feathers. On the wing, I should say. I don't know why I keep calling them tail feathers. 
That's the wing area, isn't it? Hmm. Could do with uh, the shape changing a little bit. This one goes there. Nice robin shape. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to start putting in some background. So what would be nice, just move those bushes over here. Here's a biggish, biggish brush, and some white, and there's black. Going to need more white than this, but let's uh, get this going. And what we need to do is uh, put in the snowy background. a good time to uh, look at the shape of the robin. Something like that, isn't it? We can do the old uh, back and forth trick as well. So I just want to uh, get in some of this white for the background. Helps us to see our, our little birdie a little bit better. I thought about um, doing a painting where there's a Batman as well, <laughs> not just Robin. I mean, uh, not this style. I mean, like a, a comic book Batman. I might do one actually. I want to do some like movie character paintings and stuff. I did my Matrix painting. I didn't film that one though, because it took a while. If you've been on my Facebook, you've seen it. And I was like, oh, I enjoyed doing that one. It took a while to do, but... <coughs> it looks pretty good. So I don't mind doing some more of those. Paint some of my favourite characters in the movies. Use this filbert brush now because I don't want to ruin some of the areas that I've done. I'm 
sort of looking at the shape of this, it's better. I was going to do this um, painting over Christmas. I ended up doing something else. Oh yeah, the car lights painting. Enjoyed doing that one as well, actually. Right, I'm having a look at the robin and uh, thinking about the shape of it. That shape. Just want it to be a bit more plumper than it is. My one. That's better. <coughs> get a bit of black. Get that area in there. Man, all right, uh, that feathery bit that kind of should be further across, not there. So, I always consider this to be like a <laughs> Another pass of drawing, another another way to get it right. Because now you're looking at the outside edge before I was looking at the patterns on the inside and then of course a lot of times when I'm doing paintings uh, I wait for it to dry and then go back in and then improve things. You don't have to do it all in one go. I just thought, have I uh, set record? <laughs> uh. I'm okay. I'm recording, it's fine. Throwing a little bit of light under there as well. Just so you get an idea. Okay, now then I'm gonna grab some brown, brown and white. Kind of lost some of the rob in there. That's better. Get a little bit of black, a bit dark again. Just to darken that.
just don't like the way this is. I think that's more like there. And that, and that gap. Like that. And it isn't actually that. It's not that thick there either. So these are like the, what I meant now. It's these little detail bits, little bits to try and get the uh, basic shape right of the robin. And you can spend as long as you want until it's right, until you've got it the way you want it to be. I need a smaller brush for that bit there. Pick up some of the white. It sort of goes in and out. <laughs> it's not bad that, that's this is the sort of area that I would come back to but you know for this lesson it's all right not too bad, is it? Just get some of the dark area there. Using a line. Using a bit of line there. I want to try and get a bit more of a You know, you get the, the feather can see like the lines almost. So basically I'm just going to put some lines in that go all over the place. Put some in there as well. area. Better, not perfect. So now I'm trying to get these indications in of this. The, this is a sort of thing that I would wait to do as well when it's dry and then go over it. And 
fact, talking like that really. Um, <laughs> let's be honest, I do, when I'm spending ages on a painting, I'm constantly doing it, you know, constantly. I'll leave it for a day and then I'll come back to it and do it again. Work on it a bit longer until I get things closer to what I want. And uh, something like this, I would work on and then I'd leave it and then I'd come back to it and do a bit more on it. And just keep working, working, working. Keep trying to make it better and better and better until you look at it and you go, hmm, can I make it better? And uh, um, then you tend to think, well, I think so. Not much better. So when you start thinking, well, if I can't make it much better, I think I'll leave it then. <laughs> wondered if I exaggerate that it would look better but yeah let's just have a look at this uh, shape should be more like that give me more of this bright red Just sort of want to fluff this bird up a bit. Game, dark light, dark light. It's always that game. Let's uh, do a little bit on the tree. I'm going to use this yellowy browny colour. Not really going to do much on the actually just sort of go in with a couple of colours and give the indication of a branch and then uh, what I want to do brushes and why are they all dirty <laughs> Get the 
this area a bit more correct looking. I like this colour that I used earlier. It's a bit of that colour, put it in this. Yeah, that worked quite well actually. And then that can, a bit of white can separate it. Actually, think that's long enough. I don't know. It's about right. Um. <coughs> okay. Let's get create some sort of a pink to get a uh, indication of some of the uh, the feet bits. Quite a dull pink, really. Get some black in it. Pinky black. Yeah, that'll do. I'm only going to put it in uh, sort of here and there just to indicate. Just seen some red that I would like in just there. And it's not red on there, but I'd like it there, like a little, yeah, and there, yeah, and a bit under the beak there. Yeah, it's kind of warms areas up. But there and there, maybe. There. Yeah. Well, there we go. Let's say uh, Robin. That shows you how to get started on Robin, anyway. And uh, I don't like this red bit here now. I do want some light going along there. So just take it away a bit. Oh, and some little hairy bits. I can put in. Okay. But like I said, you know, you can keep going on these. Keep adding more and more detail as you go. And have fun with colour and shape and form. And until you've got a nice painting and I hope this uh, video was interesting and uh, help you out a little bit on doing your own robin Before I uh, sign off, 
so thanks very much for watching this one it's uh, a bit different you know, kind of fun and uh, a challenge I find anyway and um, yeah hopefully I will make another one soon and for this episode I'd like to say thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll see you at another one cheers bye